has been doing rounds on the internet for quite some time now and finally I've got my hands on it and I've been using this as my primary device for a week now and this is going to be my review of the Oppo F17. Now before getting into the review, if you're new to our channel, my name is Munzella and I review some really cool gadgets for Exhibit Magazine. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified for more such content. The design of the Oppo F17 is quite impressive, especially the variant which we have is called the navy blue and it has a premium leather finish at the back which feels really very attractive. Also, it does not attract fingerprint smears as it's completely matte, so that's a plus point. It's really comfortable to hold it in your hands for longer periods of time when you're just um, typing emails or watching YouTube videos. So that's one good thing that I liked. At the front, the Oppo F17 has a 6.4 inch OLED display and it also has an always on display feature so you don't have to unlock your phone every time to check the time or um, you know just check your notifications so that's a plus point. Now watching videos on this phone was quite a good experience, the colours were punchy and vibrant and the screen was just bright enough. But sadly this phone only has a 60Hz panel and not a 90Hz or a 120Hz. It does have an in-display fingerprint sensor which worked quite well and so did the facial recognition. The Oppo F17 uses an octa-core Qualcomm SM6115 processor and has 60GB of RAM and 120GB of internal storage. The SM6115 processor performed decently well but is not as speedy as the Snapdragon 720G or even the 730. Now since the F17 runs on the Color OS 7, it's got some of the features we've already seen before like the smart sidebar, quick return bubble and the themes. Oppo F17 sports a 4000 mAh battery and supports 30 w of Google flash charging. The battery with a full charge lasts for about a day and a half with moderate usage and the 30 w Woop charger does a good job of charging the phone in under an hour. The Oppo F17 has a total of 5 cameras, 4 at the back and the usual selfie camera at the front. On the rear, it has a 16 megapixel primary camera, a 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a third 2 megapixel and a fourth 2 megapixel lenses and at the front it has a 16 megapixel camera for selfies. The camera overall captures sharp and well detailed pictures without oversaturating the colors. Autofocus is also pretty reliable. The ultra wide angle camera performs equally well in terms of colors and exposure, however, details were a bit soft. Portrait mode does a decent job of blurring the backgrounds, and the low light images are just manageable and also appear grainy. Speaking about the 16 megapixel selfie camera, it does come with the AI beautification filter which makes the picture look over smoothened and overblown. However, you do have an option of turning it off, after which the selfie camera works decently well and the skin colour appears natural. Now the question is, should you buy the Oppo F17? It has its own set of pros and cons, pros being a good build, design and a good battery life, whereas the cons are its underpowered processor and an average camera performance. Now the choice is yours, but at this price point you can also get the Realme 7 series or the Redmi K20. So this was my review of the Oppo F17. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like and share this video and I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.